You're listening to the Health Powered Productivity Podcast by RaiderCo. I'm Marcy Raider, Founder and Chief Productivity Lead. This podcast aims to give you and your team bite-sized, time-saving, focus-boosting, health-improving tips you can implement right away. Do you have anything in your life that you list out and the list keeps growing longer and longer and you don't even know where to start? Well, today's episode is about a topic near and dear to my heart, and that is limiting my book reading to limit my decisions. I am an avid reader, and whenever someone asks me, what are you up to this weekend? My answer is usually reading a book. Uh, I read about 40 to 50 books a year in various formats, um, mostly Kindle, some print, and some audio. And today I'm going to share my secrets on how I manage to read so many books and why I'm limiting my book choices for 2024. First, I am a fast reader. It is a natural talent that has been with me for as long as I can remember. Uh, and, And it certainly helps when you're excited to plow through a mountain of books. Uh, I, my sister taught me to read before kindergarten and I've just always been a big reader. I don't speed read. That is a specific technique. Um, I actually am reading them, but I'm just a naturally fast reader. Additionally, I'm not a big TV watcher. Um, binge watching for me means I've, I've watched two hours or maybe three hours if it's a movie, but a lot of times if it's over two hours, I have to split it up. But I've watched like two hours in a night or something. I'm like a binge watched if it's more than that. Um, and I often still need a break between episodes. Instead, I choose to read. Or if I'm by myself, um, a lot of times I might watch an episode of something, but then I will read a chapter in a book so that I'm not just glued to the TV. Um, I read print books in my infrared sauna, which I do almost every day that I'm not traveling. But my go-to is the Kindle because it's portable. It makes bedtime reading a breeze um, because I can turn the page with just one one little click, you know, tap of my thumb. And then plus, most of my Kindle books come from the library through the Libby app, which is a great way to save some bucks if you read this many books. The Kindle highlight feature is a game changer for me. I mark quotes and passages and points I want to reference, and then I export them to my email. And this gives me a PDF of everything I've highlighted, but then also an Excel spreadsheet of everything I've highlighted, which I then revisit after finishing the book. Um, So, you know, like I'll pull up the spreadsheet or the PDF, and I will go through everything that I highlighted and see what interested me, what I might want to come back to. And it's, it's, um, uh, it's just a game changer for me to be able to do that, to be able to end and absorb what that is. And sometimes, you know, it'll reinforce what I've learned and it provides me with conversation points for book discussions or chats with my friends that have read that book or my husband. Um, He is not a big reader, so I will sometimes pull up my notes and give him the, you know, Marcy Cliff Notes type version of something that I've read. And yes, I absolutely go back and reread quotes and passages and those notes even years later. It is like rediscovering buried treasure. Uh, I am a big fan of the Beartown series, and I think that Um, And, you know, Man Called Ove and, you know, the author is just incredible to me. And I will sometimes go back and just read some of the beautiful quotes that I highlighted from that book. For audio, I rely on the Libby app as well. And whenever possible, I time it to have the audio and Kindle versions from the library at the same time. And I'll switch between listening while doing chores and reading when I have quiet time. So I might listen in the Libby audio app while I'm you know, folding laundry. But then if I'm in the infrared sauna or you know, I'm um, waiting for a doctor's appointment or something, then I might pick up where I left off in the Kindle. And 
With audio, if it's nonfiction, I will often use 1.25 speed. Um, but if it's fiction, then I stay at 1.0 because I feel like with fiction, it is being read in a certain way by that character with a certain tone and so on. And so that's, you know, I, I do distinguish that way. For this podcast, you know, if you were listening at 1.5, then all right. Uh, but if I was reading a story, then my recommendation would be to keep it at 1.0. Um, my reading tastes are diverse, the Fifty Shades of Reading. Uh, so I usually have two books going at once. Um, during the day, it's often a business or personal development book. But at night, I will often switch to lighter or fiction reads, especially if, you know, I would say half the time when I go to bed, I just go to bed. Um, and the other half, I might read, you know, a few pages or a chapter. And I don't like reading business or personal development books at night in bed because they're usually, you know, thought provoking in some way. And, uh, you know, and I don't want my brain to be thinking about that when I go to sleep. So why am I limiting my books for 2024? In my line of work, where I've written three books myself, I'm working on my fourth, and I often receive books as gifts or requests for beta reading, it can be a lot. So beta reading is often done by a group of people before the book comes out and we get feedback or recommendations. And there's usually a time limit like, can you read this book in the next two to three weeks, you know, and give me feedback. And last year was particularly overwhelming. I was asked to beta read seven books. Um, 14 books were given to me by other authors because just like when you're a speaker, you know a lot of speaker. When you're an author, you know a lot of authors. And I, I review every book, um, if, if not just the stars. I you know will often write a paragraph or two. Um, I review them in Goodreads, and a lot of authors know that I review books in Goodreads, and also that I read a lot. And so, you know, seven beta reads, 14 books given to me by other authors, authors, and then countless recommendations. People will say, like, you have to read this, you have to read that. And at the end of December, I pruned my Goodreads list, which if you are a big reader and you don't know about Goodreads, look it up as soon as this is over. Um, Goodreads is where I track all the books I've read, all the books I want to read, and the books that I'm reading. And that's where I re review. I review more there than in Amazon, um, but but they are they are linked, but the reviews don't carry over. But my Goodreads list, you know, at one point it was like 150 that I want to read. And I pruned it down, my want to read list, to 50 books only to simplify and also avoid disappointing people. And those are the books I'll be reading. No new editions unless I take a book out. You know, until those are conquered, no new editions. And so how did I choose them? First, I asked my mastermind group, Speakers with Impact, um, who of you have books coming out in 2024? And it turns out all five of them. So that's 45 left. Um, a few friends also had their own books launching. And so that took off a few more books. And then I had also committed as part of a birthday challenge, because I'm turning 50 this year, I had committed to reading five banned books that I hadn't already read simply because the concept of banning a book is freaking ridiculous. Um, I also removed books lingering on my list without any apparent reason why they were on my list or I just couldn't recall who recommended them. And quite frankly, there were only, there are only a few of my friends and they know who they are, that when they would recommend a book, they knew that I'm so discerning. They'd say like, this is the one, Marcy, like, please read this one. And they're often people that I would then discuss the book with. It wasn't just some random like, you should read this book. Um, culling my book list, it wasn't easy, but it was a very fun exercise. And in fact, it even inspired one of my friends to declutter her reading list. And she had, I want to say like 250 or something. And she sent me a couple of emails or, you know, text messages saying like, this is really, this feels really good. This is great. Um, I am not a fan of endless choices. 
whether it's in my streaming queue or my book list. You know, when we have a lot of choices, it's often, you know, we get paralysis analysis or analysis paralysis. Um, and, you know, more choices, it doesn't equal freedom. It just equals more variety. And for some of us, it's like, it's too much. I can't decide. So then we just status quo, don't read any of them. Um, even my, you know, Netflix, Apple, HBO Max, Amazon Prime queues, they never have more than, I'm going to say eight to 10 items, but usually it's more like four or five because I feel like I'm going to watch these before I add some more. Uh, just endless scrolling and adding, you know, movies and things is just not what I do. So I'm curious if this resonates with you. Uh, maybe not with books or streaming cues, but is there anything else in your life where you just keep adding and adding and you'd rather not have a never ending list of options? I'd love to hear how you've created guardrails to reduce decision fatigue and prioritize what truly matters. Share your thoughts and let's continue the conversation. Thank you for listening to the Raider Co. Health Powered Productivity Podcast. The show notes link to any resources mentioned. If you found this podcast valuable, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone you know who could benefit. For more bite-sized tips, our top recommendations, and to learn more about working with myself and the Raider Co. team, from consulting and coaching to speaking and more, visit HelloRaiderCo.com.